afternoon, everybody. My name is Carolyn Carger with COA, and thank you for joining us for Maturing with COA. Today, I'm really, really happy that I get to have a conversation with someone who is very, very special at COA, and her name is Paulette Kozlowski. Hi, Paulette. Hi. Thanks for having me. Ooh, thank you so much for being on and talking with me. Um, Paulette is the manager of COA's Sunshine Center and also the manager of COA's Community Caregiving, Caregiver Support Program. Um, would you start off, Paulette, by explaining to us maybe, um, I know that you're a nurse, mm -hmm. and maybe we could just start by, if you could just tell us what your credentials are, because I know you have many of them. Okay. Um, as a registered nurse, I'm also a certified rehabilitation registered nurse, and um, that means that I have a big background in neurology and working with people with brain injuries, strokes, that type of thing that um, require rehabilitation. Um, I am also a qualified, um, I'm sorry, a certified dementia care practitioner and specializing in the care of dementia, as well as a dementia care specialist. Um, besides all that, I became an activity director. So I have a certification in activity directing, um, and that, is, that helped with the adult daycare program. Okay, so would you tell us then what, what the Sunshine Center is for people who don't know? Absolutely. So our Sunshine Center is a, I'd like to look at it as an activity center for people with special needs. Those that need some hands-on assistance do not have to just sit at home anymore. We open the doors to people um, that require maybe assistance in the bathroom or maybe they're unsteady on their feet. They use walkers, uh, wheelchairs are even acceptable in an adult daycare center. So if you need some hands-on assistance, you can still come to the center and um, enjoy activities, enjoy the socialization and a full day of activities as well. It also breaks up the time for the one who's helping you at home, so it gives them a break as well. So you said generally the people that you serve at the Sunshine Center are people who are dealing with dementia? That is the majority of our people, but you do not have to have dementia to come to an adult daycare center. So it could be, for instance, a stroke that has happened to you, um, people with Parkinson's disease, uh, things of that nature. Maybe a head injury has caused um, you to require now some assistance at home. So it does not have to be dementia, but that is our majority of people that come. Okay. And I know that um, we commonly refer to it as adult daycare, but I know that sometimes when you talk about it, you talk about it as adult day health care. Right. So, do you have nurses there other than yourself? Yes, we differ from a regular adult daycare being an adult day health care center in that we can administer medications. There is a nurse there the majority of the hours that we're in operation. And um, so you can get medications while you're there. We have even had someone requiring tube feeding. Um, so there are nursing interventions. We check uh, blood sugars and can give your insulin if you need it. So that is specialized. Very good. So I know that you were not always living in St. Augustine. Right. And I'm not sure whether before you came to St. Augustine, you did this type of nursing or this type of work with dementia patients. Could you tell us how you wound up in St. Augustine and then how you wound up um, being one of the people who founded the Sunshine Center? Sure. Um, so it's really kind of an adventure story in that matter. I came um, from Cleveland, Ohio, where I had practiced in every area of nursing. So I worked with people of all ages from um, the child in the womb to uh, the older people as we aged. Um, and so 
the last job that I had done, I was working in a children's rehabilitation center. And so caring for um, the infant all the way up to 21 years of age and was managing three different departments. At that time, my husband decided um, it was time to move to Florida. He wanted to retire here before our children were out of school. So they felt more comfortable uh, so they felt Florida was their home too. So we got down here and my goal was going to be now, I was going to retire from nursing. So I opened a little dress shop on Hippolyta and worked out great for a while. But as a nurse, you know, you think about retiring and relaxing, but you're so used to doing so much. So something just came to me that I wanted, that I should be uh, opening an adult daycare. And I knew very little, it, almost nothing about adult daycares, but that feeling just kept coming to me. So I thought I would op uh, get a grant, but that uh, didn't happen because when I looked into grants, they wanted too much information that I had no clue about um, since I had no experience in adult daycare all of a sudden appeared to me in the newspaper, the, our little record, uh, they were looking for a nurse to run an adult daycare. So that's how I got into the adult daycare business. And the uh, company that I worked for at that time, opening that um, adult daycare in a new facility, um, I worked for, for about, I think, three years when they suddenly decided um, that they were going out of the daycare business. They had daycares nationwide. So I came to the COA because I did not want to stop doing what we were doing. It was just helping too many people. Um, so my goal there was to find out how do I keep the funding going for people if I open another daycare, um, how can we continue to care for these same people? And that's when I met um, Brian, who um, first Donna Fee I went to, um, who was at that time their case manager. And then um, she introduced me to Brian that same day and Kathy Brown was our CEO at the time and was on vacation. So anyway, to my surprise, Brian heard my story, left the room, contacted Kathy on the phone, came back in and said, you know, we've decided you do the paperwork and we'll give you the building. And all of a sudden it was all that worries and everything of what do we do next um, was solved. So in a nutshell, I feel we were adopted into the Council on Aging and have been there here ever since. What year was that? Oh, let's see if I can even recall the year. Well, 2003. We've been here. Oh, wow. I'm, yes, we've been here for since 2003 when we first opened. And we first opened where the River House was, but since then moved over when they built the River House to the other facility at 180 Marine Street. So what was the facility there before River House, just so people know? It was a double wide trailer that they weren't really using at the time. It was set up like office building or offices and so forth. And so we were able to, or they were able to remodel it a little bit for us. And then the United Way and uh, Home Depot were, oh my goodness, they came and put a big deck on the back of it for us. And so it was, picturesque um, to say the least and really worked out well. Can you, can you give us an idea of, you know, you said that you really wanted to make sure that you, that these people were not going to lose this resource that, that meant something to them. Can you give us an idea of what it, what it does mean to them, to people with dementia or brain injuries to have a place where they can go and feel safe and socialize and have activities? Oh, it's, it's life changing for people, for the entire family. Um, for the person with dementia, they suddenly realize that now they are around other people that also are experiencing memory loss, but it doesn't have to mean that you can't enjoy life. 
And so they're still able, we look at the activities and how can we build it up for things that they can accomplish. Um, and so we're always looking at what can they still do and how can we help them succeed at it? So it's a win-win. They really, their self-esteem gets uplifted. They feel a purpose in life because now they have somewhere to go, friends to talk to, um, and the activities give them a feeling of accomplishment. Oh, that's great. And then what is the feedback that you receive from their caregivers? And caregivers are amazed too, number one, at um, just how uplifted their loved one is now, how they are suddenly doing things again that they weren't felt they were no longer able to do because now they're feeling again that I can do this. And the caregiver also has given that break that you really need. This is a job that you end up with 24 seven that you don't expect to have happen in your life. And you need that time, you need time for yourself. And so this allows them to feel that, oh my gosh, I can have my time and not worry about my loved one because they're in good hands and enjoying themselves at the same time. For them. It, yeah, it's really a win-win for everyone. So I know that you have more services that serve caregivers and, and the program's called the Community Caregiving Program. Did right. that naturally arise soon after you started the Sunshine Center or did it take some time to put that program together? It was a work in progress because realizing that um, we did support groups all along. We had the support groups for, uh, for the caregiver, but um, I, belonged, I belonged to an in-group at the time. It was called in-group. It was an information network for people in the community, um, companies, organizations, uh, small businesses, anyone that had to do with any type of medical assistance for people. And from there, I realized just how uh, much help there is out there in our community and was able to start this program that introduced caregivers to finding out that you're not alone here. There's so much help out there. So it was a good way to connect them as well as to offer education for them. So this uh, community caregiving program, that's what it's designed for. It, it gives me an opportunity to meet with you as a caregiver one-on-one -on -one and to find out what are your problems, what are you facing, and how can we help you with it. It could be simply educating you of more about um, dementia, or it could be um, connecting you with these other resources that would help you. And other caregivers as well? Yes, absolutely. It, with, through our support groups, the same thing holds true. Um, I encourage people to join support groups if you are caring for someone um, with dementia or with any other uh, disability there because of the fact that once you realize you're not alone in this and you share information what worked for you maybe it helps other people um, there's no greater way of connecting and also of venting you people understand what you're going through and so you can let out all those frustrations and anxieties those are natural things that people should be going through through that grieving process because your whole life is changing so it's important that you grieve but the way you grieve is if you are able to vent you're letting it out so makes your life so much better and it's not building up and worrying and bothering your health because you're not internalizing all of that you're letting it out yeah that makes us more healthy that way right so I know that because of COVID-19, um, a lot of COAs programs have had to shut, shut their physical locations temporarily, and that includes the Sunshine Center, sadly, and also um, your in-person caregiver, community caregiving programs. So mm -hmm. can you explain to people um, what, what programs, maybe we should just start with the community caregiving programs, are now available 
online um, so that people can still take advantage of these services that are so, so important? Absolutely. So the community caregiving program never stopped. We just went virtual. And so anyone that is looking, any caregiver looking for assistance or information or education on caregiving um, can reach me at our phone number at 904-209-3674 or you can reach us um, at caregiving or caregiving at stjohnscoa.com. So this way, um, once I connect with you, we can, if you'd like, get on Zoom and virtually connect. You can still get um, caregiver education. I still give classes over Zoom and you'll see them on our website, um, often advertised. Um, and on our uh, newsletter. And um, we can also encourage you and get you into a support group because the one thing we've got with going virtual is that um, we can offer support groups more often, more frequently, and at different times of the day. So there's no reason not to keep that connection. We want you to know that you're not alone and we want you to feel that really great and, and I know that you do caregiver needs assessments yes so it makes sense that you would want to speak with somebody at least and, and find out their situation and what you know what resources they would put the most benefit from and I know you also do a couple of educational programs that run throughout the year and and those are happening online too right Right. Yes. And so we, um, I have it into four lessons right now. Um, and it's guidance through the caregiving journey. And so it starts off, you know, as like I said, a four part lesson. Um, and I have been able to video lesson one and two so far. So that helps for those that can't get to that specific time to watch the program or oh, to watch wonderful. the lesson. Oh, good. Okay, so like if you missed the first two lessons, you can catch up. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. That's great. And you have something else going on with some um, occupational therapy students. Is that right? Yes. So the In Arts and University. Yes. Yeah. So the uh, occupational therapists from the University of St. Augustine for Health Sciences, um, many of them are already have already completed their their certified as an occupational therapist okay. they're going for their masters and phds so they are able to add to that um, caregiving education um, so they uh, have put on for us different uh, classes about safety and so forth home safety there's there's a list you can also find that in our newsletter and online mm -hmm. um, on our website. Are you calling them, they're called morning talks? Yes. And they're for caregivers, morning talks for caregivers? Yes. Do they happen once a week? Um, no, so it really depends on the class situation. Oh. So right, right now, um, the next one that is being offered is October 15th. Okay. And um, so each class has their own different set of times they can present. And so we have to, um, call me if you are interested and we can let you know the next class available. Um, that one's usually um, on Thursdays at 10 a.m. But it's not every Thursday. Not every Thursday. Okay. Right. Well, that's, that's great. And then in terms of the Sunshine Center for the actual people who are dealing with dementia, I know that you do have an online program for them to participate in. Could you tell us about that? Sure. So that one is on Zoom. We have a program Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. It runs, it, the program itself starts at 1030, but people can get on at 1015 and socialize. It makes it nice for them. That one, that little socializing time is called Talk with Friends. Um, so at 1030, the program starts and it covers all the areas we did in adult daycare, only kind of in a condensed form on Zoom. So the um, 
people. It's, so it's Sunshine Activity Time and Caregiver Cafe. We combined the two so that those that need a little assistance, their caregiver can join in and help out. If that person gets started and gets their Zoom set up and doesn't need help, the caregiver can just go off and do whatever chores they want to do at the time. Um, but it covers all the different areas, so they will get it, uh, a full morning of things like um, a topic of the day and then the history of it. We usually take a virtual field trip, all covering the same topic, and then we'll go into um, all about you, getting to know you, where each participant can uh, talk about if they've had experience with that particular topic. And then we go into um, quiz, uh, mental games to stimulate the brain. And after that, um, it is art therapy. So they learn to draw a simple art, but they come out beautiful um, following an artist's hands. And then music therapy, we end it with music therapy and the music is brought out with according to the theme that we covered for that day. Oh, and I didn't mention the chair exercise. We do that at the beginning. So it's a good cardio workout you're getting besides. So all of this stimulation for both the body and the brain um, comes into play with our sunshine activity time that we do Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays. So when in the music therapy, um, do the participants sing? Oh yes, so we encourage them to sing along. I put music last so that we can mute. So if we're getting a lot of singing, they can, others can still hear the video in the background, the oh, singing. In the back. So it works out perfectly because absolutely the words are usually on the screen. You can sing along with it. We do try to use a lot of the older songs, but sometimes there's even new ones that just go along with the theme so well. So it's a, just a lot of fun. We try to make it uh, stimulating, but yet a lot of fun for everyone. That's really great. Um, I once interviewed, um, uh, he was a senior center participant who also volunteered at the Sunshine Center. And he explained to me how amazed that he was. He would he would volunteer during the, the music time. Uh -huh. And he was there to help, I guess, as a singer, to help lead the group. And he, he told me that he was really, really amazed that you would have people who would be just quiet the whole day, seemed to not really want to interact or even, you know, have the use of language. And that when the music time would start, he said he was just blown away. They didn't even need the lyrics. Right. That, that memory of those, those songs and that music would just take over. Yes, music is magical and it is held in another part of the brain. So even as a person is no longer able to express themselves through our language, you put on an old song and you will be surprised. They may sing it word for word because they're using another part of their brain. Okay. And it's so uplifting. That's great. That's great. Yeah. How has how have the online Sunshine Center and community caregiving programs been received? Would you say? Have you gotten feedback? Yes, I, those that are able to zoom in and follow them, I think they're just. Uh, it's all positive. They're very excited and happy. And each participant really looks forward to the next one. Okay. Unfortunately, there are people out there that are not able to Zoom. They either don't have the internet connections or maybe their caregiver doesn't have time to set it up. They're working from home. Um, there's a lot of different reasons or the person maybe is starting to get too confused to understand watching something on a screen. So that's been our major problem right there. Other than that, uh, those that can really are getting a lot out of it. Um, it's those that just aren't quite able to follow it anymore that um, we feel we're really missing out on. Oh, that's too bad. Um, what yeah. are the effects of what we've all been going through with the COVID, with the pandemic? And um, how have you been dealing with this whole pandemic thing since we're on the subject? 
So I, I feel that uh, there's two different parts. It's a, it's a give and take with this. Um, the uh, funding has been rough because when you're used, you know, when you have something going where you have people there eight hours a day, um, seven or eight hours per day, and then you have your staff and everything, um, the funding at least is kind of taking care of itself. Um, when we had to close down and suddenly do the same thing, try to give programming, but in a couple hours, three days a week, that that took a burden on us. All my employees, my staff, that's so wonderful. I have a wonderful team, but unfortunately they had to go out and find other work for now because of this COVID. So that's been our drawback. Um, the positive is that we can reach more caregivers because now they no longer have to leave home to be able to join a support group right. and they can get the education same way they can get more education um as i have time to write these programs it has helped when we do start back because now all of these um programs that have been written that we used on zoom can sooner or later be used again in real life in once we restart back so there's some good that's come out of it but again we wish we could help everyone and now home care i want to point out people that can't zoom um, home care is still out there for them so there is still people that can help you we don't want you to feel if your loved one can't zoom that there's nothing else that can be done so i want to emphasize that as well right and coa has caseworkers who can help connect you with the, those resources is that right yes they can contact kathy rabino uh mm -hmm through our uh, independent living services that can help along with that if uh, you're looking for some type of home care assistance, um, she can guide you through. Right, so maybe now's a good time to just let everybody know our phone number. So if you need this type of assistance, even if you wanna get in touch with Paulette, I'm sure they can also connect you from the main line. Um, COA's telephone number is 904-209. 3700 and we have very friendly receptionists who are waiting to take your call from 8 a.m to 5 p.m monday through friday so if you have any questions about this conversation or any of the services that we're talking about or the online programs you can give them a call and they will put you through to paulette or someone in case management and we'll get you to the resources that you need um, this this show this, these conversations the idea for them came about because um, of the difference between a concept of aging and a concept of maturing and which entails developing and growing and becoming becoming and we've talked before about how in our culture you know aging has a negative connotation and maturing has more of a creative or growing or becoming connotation. So we wanted to kind of focus on that. And just with you, I think um, when we're talking about dementia and Alzheimer's and issues like that, that have to do in many cases with aging, um, we deal with some of the, some of the, the challenges of aging and maturing. So I wondered if you could share your, your insight into you know, how people who have dementia or who are diagnosed with that or dealing with brain injury or Alzheimer's, how they, how they are accessing and maturing. Um, does that make sense? Sure. So the main thing is that no matter what life throws at you, you want to keep looking at what can I still do? It, rather than just focusing on, normally our brains go into this depression mode of I used to be able to do this and I can't do this anymore. And you get depressed, you get frustrated. Um, to learn to focus instead on what can I still do, you will be surprised at 
how many things you still can do no matter what life throws at you. So even for instance, a person that's bed bound can really um, find that there's a lot of things they can still do. They may still be able to crochet or paint or come up with some other thing that they could do that may not only help them, but they can do it for others. They may be able to make things that can help others. Um, so it's so important to look at that glass uh, half full rather than half empty. Yeah. Absolutely. And I would imagine that um, these are opportunities to grow in, in patience patience with yourself or patience with others and compassion um, right. compassion for each other between caregivers and maybe also connect you with the world because if you weren't dealing with that situation you might not wind up in the company of the people at the sunshine center so you can actually make friends and have a have a, a new and different life Absolutely, absolutely. And for the caregiver too, when you know you feel like your whole life has changed and what do I do and so forth, um, it's so important again to, first of all, learn about what's happening, why your loved one is changing. So those classes on dementia really, really help. Or if a person's had a stroke, same idea. The, the classes also teach you just what happens with brain injury in itself. And then the more you understand, the easier it is to accept. And then you also learn how to deal with it. So you make your life a lot more positive in, for both you and your loved one. Well, that's, that's good advice. And, you know, I have the conviction that if you're here, you're here for a purpose. Absolutely. Um, so even if you're dealing with something like dementia or a loved one who has dementia, there are probably ways that you can grow through that experience. And you had once said to me that you can, that, that it's part of your education and part of what you are inspired by is seeing how people can continue to enjoy life and enjoy each other and love each other and receive that even when they're dealing with a diagnosis like dementia, Alzheimer's and brain injury. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Well, before we close out our conversation, because I know you have an appointment after this, um, I have a couple of questions I'd like to ask you. Sure. So if you could go back in time and speak to 18-year-old Paulette and give her a little bit of advice, or wisdom from where you are now. Can you think of something you would tell yourself at 18? So at 18, I think it's keep learning, keep learning. You learn from uh, stay in school and there's so much you can uh, keep learning about life. Um, and how can you make a difference in the world? So you not only keep learning, but feel the direction you belong in. Each person, like you said, has a purpose in life. So just kind of follow that goal. And another thing at age 18, everything in moderation. <laughs> so we don't want to overdo it one way or the other. Um, that means not only just learning, but enjoying life. So also you want to make those memories and build those memories. And surround yourself with friends that um, understand you. Um, too many people, I know when I first went to college, it was, um, I was introduced to sororities, for instance, and I, not that I have anything against sororities or fraternities, it's just that some people um, try, will do anything to try to fit into a group. And that's where you see these crazy things that they have to go through to try to prove themselves. Um, and it's probably wonderful to join those groups eventually if you belong there, but you want to make sure that these are people that have the same interests and likes as you do. You're not trying to mold yourself into something. That's what I would say for someone at 18 or myself at 18. Very good advice. 
And um, now, if you had to do the same and give yourself advice at 40 years old, would the advice differ a little bit or any, any words of wisdom for 40 year olds? Well, for at 40 now, um, you've gone through quite a bit. You've had a lot of life experiences and so forth. So um, I think it's not, don't be afraid though to change your path if you feel you need to. Um, some people at that age um, feel that maybe they're not happy in a job or they just not learning anymore in that job. Um, it's okay to keep the knowledge you have and go forward with it, to switch if you want, or if you aren't, you know, if you're happy in that job, by all means, stick with it. But that's what I feel at age 40. It's time, keep using that knowledge and just keep growing, but keep your journey going in the direction you want it to and helping others my gosh there's nothing better than a feeling of being able to help others well yes and, and you are such an inspiration paulette oh. i really mean it i'm sure everybody who works with you and all the people that you that you serve are aware of it but since we're going to be putting this online i just want everyone to know that do not hesitate to contact paulette she is in my estimation, Paulette's, she's an angel. She's uh, such a good person. But, she's so devoted to serving others. And um, anyway, don't hesitate to reach out. You'll, you'll thank me if you get to know Paulette. Well, the other thing I want to say, mention, thank you for that, Carolyn, but is that all of our employees at the COA share the same feelings they are all that way so i've never been fortunate enough to be adopted into a company where everyone's heart is full of gold and wants to help others so you won't go wrong by trying to reach out to the coa in general i agree i totally agree never work with, with nicer people more more loving giving people so for those of you out there who would like to contact Paulette, I'm going to give you the general way to contact her. You can call the main number at 904-209-3700. And you can also email Paulette at P. Kozlowski. You want to spell that? Sure. K-O-Z-L-O-W-S-K-I. With a P in front. Yes. At stjohncoa.com, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay, and then you can also contact Paulette um, at your, your desk number. What was that again, Paulette? So the uh, other number is 904-209-3674. And if you can't remember the spelling of my name, you can do caregiving at stjohncoa.com. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. Okay. And then if anyone out there would like to sign up for our newsletter, um, then you will get the information quickly on new developments, new programs that we're offering. Um, that newsletter comes out every Monday morning. It's an e-newsletter, so it will be delivered to your inbox. And it's easy to sign up for that. You can either call the main number and ask one of the receptionists to take down your information, or you can go to COA's website, which is www coasjc.org and scroll down on the home page and you'll see a link there that says um, sign up for our e-newsletter and if you click on that link it will take you through the steps to sign up to receive our newsletter and then you will be in the loop with um, all the new developments and programs and before I before I close out our conversation Paula I just want to say if anyone out there um, is interested in supporting Paulette's work for our community and COA's work for our community. Um, we would love it if you wanted to make a donation. It's very easy to do so. Um, you can visit our website, www.coasjc.org, and look for the donate button because we could really use your help, especially with COVID 19 shutting down our facilities and the way that that has um, impeded so much of our funding. So we're trying to stay healthy as an organization so we can continue to serve the people who really, in some cases, desperately need our help. 
and especially someone like Paulette is working with people who really, really need all of our help from the whole community. So if you can help, we would appreciate it. Anyway, thank you, Paulette. Thank You're you welcome. so much for doing this. My, apolog my apologies to anyone who was not able to see us on live, but uh, we will figure out what that problem was. And hopefully next week, we'll be back up live on Facebook anyway. Thank you so much, Paulette. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Take care. Take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.